in the name of the risen Christ, who comes to silence all of our doubts and fears. It was in the wake of childbirth, the joy of childbirth, that Adam and Eve were also left to ponder and wonder. Would this be the one by whom God would keep his promise and crush the devil's head who had deceived them? Through the pain of infertility, Adam and, or Abram and Sarai were also forced to wrestle with the hard truth. Wondering, would God, how would God keep his promise that was tied to their offspring? Through painful years of, of slavery in Egypt, God's people also had to wrestle with the burden of wondering. How long until God would free them from this burden? And then also through the years of, of exile, as God's people were removed from their home, from, from the promised land, they also had to wonder once more. When, if ever, would God deliver them? And then it is in the the dark wake of a crucifixion that we hear it once more. Disciples wondering exactly what had just happened. Two days before Jesus had been crucified, the one that they had given their lives to was now suddenly gone. Circumstances had changed significantly. They were left to wonder. And now a report came from the women who had gone out early in the morning expecting to find death. They came back reporting that that tomb was empty. Once more, it, it seemed as if things had been just ripped from their hands. There was fear, there was doubt, there was uncertainty. Peter, the one always to act, decided that he must see it himself. So we're told that he, he ran out to that tomb, went inside, and what is the gospel? How did the gospel conclude? He went away wondering to himself what had happened. Wondering in much the same way that so many of God's people had wondered long before him. I think every one of us can understand. When things are taken away suddenly. When circumstances change quickly. When things are, are different than what we would expect. In these moments we are left to wonder. To ask questions. To be afraid. To be filled with doubt and uncertainty. This, of course, is what death in particular does so well. For every single one of us who has ever faced the death of a loved one, we know how it can raise and, and confuse our emotions. How it can cause us fear. How it brings us face to face with the most serious of questions. How it often sends us walking away wondering how we are possibly going to move forward from this moment of pain and loss. It's not just death that does this to us. This is how life often also treats us. As circumstances change suddenly. As what we know and are accustomed to can be ripped away from us so suddenly. In these moments, we are left to wonder. We are left to, to wrestle with those emotions of fear and, and worry, doubt, and, and frustration. In those moments, we are left wondering, how are we going to move forward? No doubt, events in your own personal life in the two years that it has been since we have gathered together on Easter Sunday. 
No doubt there are events that have happened personally in your life that have, have left you with so many of those feelings. Wondering as God's people have always wondered. Circumstances have changed. Things have been ripped away from you. You wonder, how will you move forward? And for all of these troubles and uncertainties and hardships, we want, we want definitive answers. We want clear direction. We want instant relief. And Jesus, in his word, comes and tells us as we live in this world, he gives us this proclamation. In this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you will have trouble. And he does not come right in this moment to take us out of the world. Very often, he does not change circumstances. He does not change challenges. He does not change hardships. But listen to what he says. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And Easter Sunday, the day that we gather for today, is his assertion of that truth. That he has overcome. The cross was this sinful world's last-ditch effort to silence Jesus. Sin tried to nail him to that tree. Death tried to bury him in that tomb. The devil tried to drown out his voice, his word, his promises with finality. But it is in the resurrection that we see the futility of each of their efforts. It is in the resurrection that Jesus gives proof that he has, in fact, overcome. And so it is in the resurrection that we find our confidence in all that God lays out for us in his word. What that means for us is that in life and in death, now and for eternity, we never need to wonder about the most important truths. Your Jesus, the one that you look to and follow, is exactly who he says he is. The promises that he gives to you throughout the pages of his scripture, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, from that first promise where he, he guaranteed that he would destroy and crush the devil's head, to the last promise of Revelation where he says, Behold, I am coming soon. Jesus gives us certainty and assurance. And sin, the devil, death, well, each one of them, too, has been overcome. Peter walked away from the empty tomb on that first Easter morning, wondering to himself what had happened. Go to the other Gospels and we see that there was very much the same uncertainty still remaining. Some of the disciples were filled with fear. Others huddled in a locked room. None of them knew quite what to make of everything that had happened. But as you gather on this Easter Sunday, you can rejoice. You can be filled with joy. You can have absolute certainty. Because Jesus is alive. Because, dear Christian, Jesus has made it so that you never need to wonder. Amen.